it's nice to be speaking to all of you. It's a part of the fraternity which is very close to my heart because day in and day out I work with partners in my line of business. So, so thank you for having me in front of you. Uh, I also wanted to offer my good wishes to all the nominees for the, for the awards night tonight. Uh, like they say, may the best candidate win. And I, I hope Verinda has done the necessary uh, vetting of all the candidates to do that. Anyway, let's start. I mean, uh, I don't think I need slides to support me. So in the last one year, every single presentation that I've done has spoken about digital transformation. Right? And I've tried to explain in different ways what digital transformation means. So I thought I'll take a leaf out of Gartner's prediction for 2019 and talk about trends and also touch upon a little bit about 2020 and what Gartner has spoken about trends in 2020 and, and put the emphasis on why we say that we are really transforming digitally. right? So the Gartner prediction for 2019, and I know it's a little late in the year now, spoke about the intelligent digital mesh. And that was all about how AI is powering everything that we work with going into the future. It spoke about a digital world where the real and the virtual world are coming together to create a new digital reality. And it spoke about connections. Right? It spoke about connections uh, with people, processes, things. And the convergence of all of this was what essentially was driving a continuous innovation process in our industry. So I'll quickly go through those 10 trends. And I don't think it's up the presentation yet. The first one was autonomous things. Now, autonomous things is using AI to drive high levels of capabilities in hardware and software. And you see that with drones. You see that with autonomous vehicles. You see that with autonomous shipping on the sea. Essentially, it's a convergence of artificial intelligence acting on hardware and software and intelligent agents acting on behalf of us. So that's kind of the world that's evolving there. The second most important thing was augmented reality. Now, augmented reality or augmented analytics is not about replacing AI with people. It is how AI can augment people, right? This is all about using natural language interfaces and creating citizen data scientists, right? So for example, as a sales manager, you want to know what can hit quota, what are the various issues that you have, and then the system throws up you know, a whole set of data points with hypothesis working on top of that, which gives you insight that you never had before. Right? So that's the second trend. The, the third trend is all about AI-driven development. You got it? It's working? All right. The AI-driven development is all about using AI in the development process. This is how AI is helping us to create AI-enabled systems which are very easy to use. Right? So you see AI being used in automated code generation, in testing, in model creation, and so on and so forth. Digital twin is a, is a real life uh, a representation or a digital representation of a real life entity. Right? And this could be a digital representation of a process people think. And airline industries, major manufacturers, process industries are using this kind of models to monitor real life assets and drive high levels of operational excellence, cost savings, and so on and so forth. Empowered Edge, and respected Mr. Tagi spoke about Empowered Edge with Manoranjan, for example. And so you see a lot of capabilities being driven at the edge. The proliferation of devices, and, and there are estimates that you will have one, three devices per person in the next few years, is really driving this phenomenon. So there are three characteristics here. One is cloud to the edge, which means the edge is not competing with the cloud, but it is driving, driving high levels of capabilities using cloud-like architectures to drive capabilities at the edge. Second is capabilities within the edge itself. Right? So you have AI-driven chips, more storage, more memory, more compute. And then it is all about connectivity. And we spoke about that. Right? So with 5G ramping up across the globe, you will see tremendous amount of empowerment at the edge. Immersive experience is how we are interacting and how humans are interacting with the, with the digital world. Right? And this is you know, creating a new digital reality 
that we are finding it difficult to perceive in many times. So this is the world of augmented, mixed and virtual reality. Right? So for example, you have a digital assistant who is sitting in an office working with some worker in the factory trying to bring up a piece of equipment that is saving millions of dollars to the production line. Or this could also be about how we are interacting on a daily basis. So when I do a hotel booking or I do an airline booking or I pay my insurance premium online, you have this conversational platforms like chatbots that are acting as digital service agents, right? So we see this all across us. Blockchain, as we all know, it's a ledger, secured ledger. Uh, it, it's based on, an, on a trust model where transactions are independently uh, working together in that ledger, right? So wherever there is technology friction, business friction, you have applications of blockchain. Healthcare, financial sector, land records, and all of these places. And then we have smart spaces. And smart spaces is all about creating environments where you have n number of capable systems all working together in an integrated fashion where you are basically targeting certain persona, user categories, industry scenarios. Right? So essentially creating digital twins of things like, like smart cities. A very important point that we all know and have touched upon is privacy and ethics. So just because we have data, we can mine the data, we can use it uh, to create insights. How much of that can we really do? What are the controls? What is the line that you should never cross? You walk into a retail store today, the moment you stop, step out of it, they have captured your data. Facial recognition systems at airport, they are capturing your data, are supposed to capture the data on an ongoing basis. Does it seek your permission? What are the controls? Is this permissible? What are the laws? What are the regulations? This is a very, very important element of the digital world coming into the future. And then there is quantum computing. Now, this is very interesting because Gartner said quantum computing will take three to four years to really come to life. Okay? Essentially, you know, classical computers in a super library will read the books in a sequential fashion very fast. A quantum computer will read all of that together. Whilst I was doing this research three weeks back, I read about Google uh, claiming quantum supremacy. So they've created a quantum computer which presumably does a calculation which a classical computer will take 10,000 years in 200 seconds. That's the scale. Which of course IBM has gone ahead and said, no, that's not right because a classical computer can do that in two and a half days and not 10,000 years. So the jury is out on that one, but these are real life cases where quantum computer can help like, like uh, chemistry, material sciences, molecular biology, in laser and plasma physics. So there's a lot that's happening here. So these are the trends that Gartner said will influence the way we work. This is what will create innovation. This will create the digital mesh. And essentially, for all of us, this is what will create our business value. Because unless we are able to understand what's the underlying technologies in all of these, we will have an issue with respect to how we can sustain ourselves. So if you were to scratch the, the surface further and check what are the technologies we are talking about here, it's AI, ML, blockchain, RPA, IoT, and so on and so forth. And I have worked in this industry for 25 years. And right through these 25 years, we've had these predictions. Someone will come and say something, and we'll on the ground say, boss, this is never going to happen. There is a yawning gap between predictions and real life adoption. But I can tell you, this is for real. And we may all have our own arguments that we do not have use cases, and this is too complex, and so on and so forth. But this is real. The digital transformation is real. And the one reason for that is the cloud. Because whether we like it, don't like it, a lot of these services are available and easily consumable form on the cloud across a lot of public cloud providers. Any of these technologies and more is easily available. So you see rapid adoption of this across industries. You look at a traditional CIO trying to look at systems of uh, record, large systems like ERP, CRM, where 
you know, you are largely transaction oriented. Today, CIs are looking at systems of engagement which are more customer facing, which is driven more by customer experience, where releases and the updates are very, very fast. You are essentially looking at how am I looking at adopting some of these new age technologies, like I spoke about, to be really digitally agile. Now, I'll also tell you something. We work with 1,000 plus customers. We work with 1,000 plus partners. We've kind of a hybrid model. And we've seen absolute rapid adoption of these technologies. I was in a jury two days back in Delhi, a very eminent jury looking at Lifetime Achievement Awards, IT Person of the Year Awards, and we discussed some 25 companies. The adoption that the, of technology that these companies have done is mind-boggling. Uh, I, can, I can give you my insights on some of the discussions if you guys are interested later on. But for now, this is what the world is all about. So when you look at a customer in this kind of a world, and what does he really want? Of course, he wants to know how I can get into the cloud, but whatever and however you may say it, the customers out there are not ready. They need help to first understand what their software state is, how do I optimize it, and how do I really go onto the cloud. So that's a given. They all want to go onto the cloud. But the important thing is, when you go there, how am I supposed to work on the cloud? And a lot of customers are realizing that cloud is not necessarily the silver bullet that it was spoken to be. Yeah, it's agile, it's scalable, it's flexible. One value proposition was cost. And a lot of customers have started to realize that it's not necessarily very cost effective. Right? So this promise of the cloud is a double-edged sword. So you need to be careful because what's happening is consumption is going out of, out of wax, subscriptions are not properly optimized, configurations are not optimized, and we are beginning to hear conversations in our circle, which you will also have heard, something called as cloud data repatriation, which means people are now trying to go hybrid, bringing the, the workloads and application from the cloud back on-prem. Because they need someone to help them with subscriptions, with the management, with configurations, with cost, with security, with governance, and all of that. And it is not easy. It is not easy. It is a very complex world. How much you are, how much you are, and because cloud is, is, is open for everyone to consume, right? So what are the controls you have? How do you use and how do you tax subscriptions to user groups? How do you build thresholds? How do you give alerts? All of that become extremely important. And therein lies the opportunity for all of us. All of us. And as I go and I do workshop with customers, you will find it hard to believe that a lot of customers don't even have basic antivirus software. Decently large companies. Decently large companies. Cloud to bhot dur ki baat hai. I mean, it is beyond the realm of their thought process. So it's in an absolutely underpenetrated base where people are saying, I want to digitally transform. They don't know what it means, but I want to transform because everybody is saying that they are transforming. So the, the, the penetration and the lack of resources in-house and the desire to do something provides a great opportunity for all of us together to be able to do something seriously which creates value in this world. And hence, I always say, Digital transformation is extremely personal. And in my experience in the last couple of years, there is no one definition that fits everyone. For a startup, it means building a new platform, right? Creating a new innovation, which a lot of our great startup companies are doing. They're creating new platforms, redefining processes, disrupting industries. For large enterprises, it's about taking a small workload or, or digitizing a function, doing it in a piecemeal basis. But at, when you really look at the basic tenets of what you're trying to do, I would say there are three of them. The first one is essentially, what is the app? What's the service? What's the workload? What's the function? What is it that you want to digitize? That's essentially what it is all about. You want to create something new. You want to do something which is different than others. What's that different thing? Second, how will I get it delivered to my customers? That customer could be an internal customer. That customer could be an external customer. But essentially, how will I get it delivered to the customer? 
And third, because digital transformation is all about cloud and this will all reside in the cloud most of the times, how do I keep optimizing it in the cloud? What are the, what are the obstacles? How can I make sure my sustainability stays? Because this, the app, the solution service that you want to digitize talks about your differentiation, your market, what you really want to do, right? How you will serve it depends on how will you make money out of it? How will you drive cloud economics? How will you gain share? How will you stand out from competition? And how you sustain really depends on what's your competency. How will you make sure that whatever you put in the cloud, you're able to sustain it because cloud is an ongoing journey. It's not a one-time destination. Right? So what is the competency? What are the services that I have? Is there someone who can help me with life cycle management? And all of these things become pretty, pretty important. And let me try and now interview, interweave what Crayon does in this space, right? So we are a global company. We address 80% of the global workspace. We are digital transformation experts. We use a philosophy called SAM first, cloud first. We work with thousands and thousands of partners, ISVs, hosters, SIs, you name it, and with customers. We have, we have hybrid in that sense. We help in IP creation for our customers. So if, we, if it's a normal workload which you want to take to the cloud or it's something that you want to build, no problem. We go into a customer premise. We understand what his workloads are. We help him optimize. It's a, bi it's a bimodal way of working on IT, right? You sustain what you have by optimizing and you innovate for the new. So it's a bimodal way of working. So the, the SAM, or let me say the software as asset management practice, is all about sustaining and optimizing what you have by looking at workloads, saying you don't need this, you need to go on the cloud, this can be eliminated, this should be taken on the cloud, this is the cloud you need to go on, so on and so forth. When it comes to really how do you want to deliver, so how do you want to package it? Do you want to sell it as a SaaS product, or do you want to sell it in any other way? What is it that we will help you build with? What is what is our approach? Is it a journey? It's a destination? What is it? We believe it's an ongoing journey where we need to build it in a very different fashion so that it makes sense in terms of the money that you make. And then it's all about the value that you create, right? So we, are a, we do a lot of different things. We have cloud architects, we have system consultants. Half of the workforce globally are consultants and advisors. In Kiran, though we work with a lot of licensing provider, inherently we are very advisory based. So a team of cloud architects, we have invested in data scientists. We have a very, very robust GDPR practice for data protection. And we have helped customers in India having business interests in Europe with GDPR exercises. So from the time you want to assess the software that you have for workload assessment to see what can move on to the cloud. And then the whole thing about doing the prep, doing the POCs, doing the migration, optimizing it, and also cloud managing it. We do end-to-end -end everything. So, so that's what we really stand for. Couple of quick slides on what it means for all of us, right? I mean, you do great things, you are a global company, so what? What does it mean for, for us? So what we have, and when we work with partners, what we have built is something we called as the in Crayon Intelligent Cloud. It's a series of, of portals which do different types of things for our partners. Essentially, it's the life cycle management of a partner working with us. For example, Cloud IQ is a self-service portal that can manage your cloud products and services. So it's, it does automated billing. It helps you manage your subscriptions. It helps you understand the cost for a license-based service. It helps you understand usage for a subscription-based service. You can build thresholds within the system. You can have dashboards that gives you view of what your cost could be. Absolutely foolproof way of managing your cloud subscriptions. We have, we have portals which give you a lot of collateral on different technologies. You can use that collateral to build marketing collateral for yourself. There is a, a portal, which is a pulse portal, which is more a loyalty. The more you work with us, you get, you get loyalty points. It's like it's like your Jet Airways loyalty program, which you can go off and get more services, products, all of those things, right? So essentially, four pillars to the engagement that we have. Partner onboarding, you come in a Cloud Desk team. 
familiarizes you with everything that we have, helps you get onboarded, gets you connected with all the ecosystem of players. So that's point number one. Point number two, partner value add. I, we don't believe that everyone can do everything. So we have a rich uh, bouquet of services, especially on the software and cloud analytics side, where starting from basic cloud entitlements or licensing entitlements to ISO 20,000 certifications, readiness for that certification, I mean to say, GDPR, cloud economics, what are you spending on what cloud, how can you optimize, all of these services are available which can be white labeled along with your services and sold to a customer. We believe that this is an absolutely no conflicting model because customers require a whole lot of things and no one partner can do that. The power of two is always greater than the power of one. That's what we always believe. Partner development is all about getting a partner through webinars, through in-house coachings, getting them familiarized with all the necessary programs, the changes in programs, the technological changes that are going on, and we do that on an ongoing basis. Most importantly is partner growth. And partner growth comes from, you know, end of the day we all want to make money, isn't it? I mean, no one wants to work with each other without any money. We are all business people. The incentive programs or even the distribution programs with, with our OEMs keep changing rapidly. The two large OEMs that we work with on the cloud side, their programs have changed. A lot of you will be knowing that. Helping you through that maze of programs, how do you make money to those programs, how can you make incentives, uh, how do we help co-create something together uh, is something that we do well. In the last one year, we have gone and done a lot of marketing programs with partners. We picked up partners with a particular skill. We looked at a cluster of customers. We got them into rooms. We created breakfast uh, meetings. We created small uh, events. Crayon has put the money on the table. Partner has got the customers. We've created a nice value proposition together. And we've gone and helped customers acquire, uh, uh, help partners acquire customer. It's something that we are doing on an ongoing basis. So right from the time you onboard till the time we handhold you to make money is something that we do uh, and I think we do very well. Uh, so that's kind of the entire framework of partners working with us. And I like to summarize with this one last slide. It's, it's, for me, I think Crayon can open vistas and gates in new opportunities for you. So it, and like uh, the resp respected Mr. Tiagi just said, you, know, you open the gates and you swim in prosperity, right? So these are two acronyms, right? I already spoke about we being global. One of the things I would like to touch upon here is that a lot of partners come to us and say, we want to go global. I want to meet your team in Middle East or in Singapore or in Europe or in US. And we have made a lot of connections for our partners. We have helped them set up operations or set up whatever capabilities that they want. Of course, we have not been successful all the time. Sometimes it's just not worked. But a fair amount of partners have started now operations in geographies that they were never present before. So that's one important element of being a global company that I wanted to speak about. Then this point about aggregation is when I go and talk to a customer and you look at a digital transforming landscape for the customer, there is no one of us can do everything. So I believe with the integration platform that we have, which is Cloud IQ, which can help you do automated provisioning and billing, and the number of multi-skill partners that are available on our platform, each with different sets of skills, we, we do what we call the marriage between all of us. So if you want to, let's say, deliver an RPA solution, but you are yourself a blockchain expert, and you need to have the customer with you, you can come to us, and together we can weave this solution for the customer. And we've done that in several, several opportunities. We have customer scenarios where there are six partners working with the customer. And all are happy, making money, in harmony. Because these are different skill set, customers understand, partners understand, world is changing, it's a cooperative world, you know, we can feed off each other's success. That's important, and we are that aggregation point for you. Technology services, we've already spoken about, GDPR, cloud economics, licensing, you know, migration support. Again, again I'm saying, this is a no-conflicting model. Some partners say we want to work with you, 
to do everything. They have, they, they are building their capabilities, let me say it that way. And we are happy to have, give them the assistance that they want. Some partners say we've got everything. We are just happy to give them the platform. So we are very, very flexible and modular in the way we approach our, our, our customers and we are happy to work in any fashion. The point is, we have the services and someone needs it, we are happy to provide it to you. And then of course the ecosystem being a global company working with so many different thousand partners. We have a lot of cloud relationship with OEMs like Veeam and Acronis and we have a cloud relationship with Red Hat and with uh, VMware and of course we are cloud distributors. What it does is, it allows a lot of interplay between this. For example, you could take a Red Hat ISV and start hosting him on Azure. Or you could take a backup solution which is built on Veeam uh, or Carbonite and host it on any of the clouds. So you can create specific packages that could be very, very useful for customer scenarios. It also can help you build security products. Right? So that's, that's how it all works and right from the time you work with us, you know, providing you with the platform and the expertise to do cloud economics to the entire ecosystem and tech advisory. I think we can do everything for you. That's about the only thing I wanted to tell you. Uh, my entire team is here. I am available. If you feel there is something that we can, we can work together, feel free to approach me. Uh, I'm looking forward to spending a great evening with all of you. And once again, my best wishes to, to, the, to all the nominees for the award. So all, wishing all of you a great day and, and I hope you enjoy the day. Thank you.